Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles. I'm out on a little hike today. I thought I'd show you guys this false Solomon seal that we see right here. This is one of the good ways to tell if you have a false Solomon seal is these berries. Because regular Solomon seal doesn't produce berries here. Regular Solomon seal has the berries underneath the stem hanging down. Versus false Solomon seal, as you can see, has these berries here at the end of the stem. Some other things we have in the area are some sassafras, which is always good. Smells good. I like to take... I like to take the young little leaves, or these young little leaf buds on the sassafras, and I like to use those as my little nibble. Leaves all the way up to this size are really tasty, and Mitch of Native Survival actually did a video on the sassafras stem, which is edible as well. So that's really cool, so you guys might want to check into the stem, because it tastes great too. It's a short little walk in, uh, it's really only about a couple miles into where I need to go. It's pretty hot today though. It's about 90 degrees outside and the, uh, the bugs are really bad. It rained the other night here so quite a few mosquitoes out, quite a few flies. This part of this trail right here is very slippery. It looks like, you know, it looks like you'd want to go here but man, I mean it's I don't know how well you can see the slope right there. It's a really good slope and it's very slippery. I like to take the uh, little stairs here. It keeps me from slipping. There you can see the good sized hill that I'm going down. It's a really long hill, very drug out, and does a little bit of weaving, which actually makes the walk a lot easier. Quick interruption for some mint. Beautiful flowers here. Can tell it's a mint a couple ways, mainly the smell. Obviously with any mint, you just rub the stem or one of the leaves or the flowers. And you're going to smell. And after you do that, you're always going to smell some sort of minty smell for the most part. There are some plants that are in the mint family technically that don't smell like mint. So make sure you keep that in mind as well. But for the most part, any of your mints, you're mainly going to smell mint. So if you see a plant that does have a square stem, because that's one of the key identification factors of a mint is a square stem. However, there are some plants that have a square stem that are not mints that are poisonous. So keep that in mind too. But if you do see a plant that has a square stem you think might be a mint, rub it and smell the leaves, the flowers, the stem. And if you smell any mint, there's a really good chance, like a 99% chance that it's a mint. See a little fly there getting ready to do some pollination. I'll leave my hand off this flower. There he comes back. He just left again. Sorry, buddy, if my scent's ruining your day. Here right next to the mint, we have some beautiful uh, spice bush, some nice lush leaves. These things are great looking right now. We're in a perfect area for the spice bush because it's really moist. Here you guys can see the leaves of wild ginger. There's wild ginger in the area here, so there's plenty of that. That's always nice. A lot of the creeks in my area are usually dry during the summer. That's a really shitty thing for some people who come out in some parts of Indiana and want to go camping. Off trail, back country camping, or wilderness camping, because we have a few places where that's allowed, and it's really cool to do. However, it's... Sorry, I got distracted by something, and I'll show you that in a second. However, it really sucks whenever you plan to go back country camping, and you're expecting to find water camping next to a creek. You come out here... You hiked a few miles and then next thing you know the creeks are drained when you get out here. So that's something that upsets a lot of people. Check this out. This is what I got distracted by. Here you guys can see these oyster mushrooms. These things are extremely beautiful. Here I'll put my hand next to them so you guys can see how big they are. These are starting to get a little slimy as you can see and you know you can't feel it but yeah they're getting really slimy. You can see that slime there. So they're starting to go bad. They're getting attacked by bugs right now. So I'm not going to be picking these at all. However, however, these are extremely beautiful looking oyster mushrooms. These things would taste amazing if they were just a little bit fresher. These ones on the tops are good. These are just fine. These, however, as you can see the slime developing, I wouldn't eat them. Here you can see the characteristic oyster mushroom base with the forked gills. See a little ant there doing some stuff. 
But yeah, that is awesome. I didn't expect to see that. Those are, uh, these are some really nice summer oyster mushrooms though, man. These things would have been good if I was here just a day or two ago. This would have been beautiful looking. However though, it is berry season, so, eh, torment. However, it is berry season. Uh, the berries should be coming up here soon, the next week or two, depending. They're starting. I saw some up on the ridges up there that are starting. However, they're not ready yet. Look at this huge fern. This thing is huge. I'm standing straight up right now. This thing is almost eye level with me. This thing is huge. This thing is absolutely huge. It's like a Jurassic fern. But yeah, I can really tell I'm in the bottoms now because I just burped and it echoed like crazy. I love this little bottom, man. I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful down here and peaceful. I usually never run across too many people down here. Granted, I'm on a really popular hiking trail. Not a lot of people come out here this time of year, mainly because it's too hot. A lot of people in my state don't like to be outside in the woods when it's 90 degrees outside, especially after it rained because of the humidity, the moisture, the bugs. Most people just can't tolerate it. Here you can see one of the big patches of nettles. The nettles are growing all along this creek side here. Everywhere along this creek side you're going to see nettles. And most likely some spice bush and some sanicle and all kinds of other plants. But man, the nettles are everywhere. And these things are still good to be eating. There's no flowers on these so you can still go ahead and eat these. Nothing wrong at all with them. I might actually take some of these nettle greens because I really enjoy nettles. Here you can see Jack in the Pulpit's fruit. This happens after the plant flowers. You can see these extremely large leaves. Here's my hand for a comparison there. These would make excellent toilet paper if you had nothing else around. There's a very, very small chance of you getting anything on your hands if you're using that. Okay, now that right there looks like somebody built a TP. But it's not. That's really cool on the camera. It totally looks like someone's like built a TP frame or something. It's just two vines and a stick behind it. Just a tree behind it. That's really cool. Interesting. If any of you guys watch my Edible Plants of Spring video, this is the creek that I was by when I said I was by the junction of two creeks and I was filming the thistle, the bull thistle. This is where I was at and you guys may remember how much that creek was flowing or this creek was flowing. And you can see what it looks like now. This is what most of southern Indiana is like in its creeks and streams. Do not expect to find water. But you can see just how wide this creek really is. And man, this thing, during the spring and the winter, and usually whenever you're coming down here like this, I usually have to stop and take off my shoes right there and pull up my pant legs, or if I'm wearing shorts, I don't worry about that. And then I have to walk barefoot, usually across the creek, to get to the other side of the trail over there because it's usually up so high. Whereas now you can see it's not up high at all. As a matter of fact, there's actually plants growing down here on the creek bed. And this is extremely typical of Indiana this time of year, man. This is so typical. Now this is one of the things that a lot of people love to visit Indiana stream beds for, is their geodes. A lot of people love collecting geodes in this state because it's, well, one of the main things that we really have when it comes to rocks. This isn't the best state for geology in some cases. If you're wanting to study the Ice Age and how it affected the landscape, this is a perfect place to study that stuff. Um, but as far as cool rocks, we don't have a whole lot here. Geodes are one of the most popular things that people go for. All across stream beds in Indiana, you're going to see most likely piles of geodes where people are collecting them. It's, it's pretty common. You're going to find the geodes everywhere. You know, For example, just where I'm at now, you're going to find little pieces of them. Just everywhere you're going to find little pieces of them, big pieces of them, whole geodes, broken up ones. All kinds of stuff. One of the things I really like about Indiana stream beds are the fossils. This is actually part of the old seabed or ocean floor that used to cover Indiana. This is a bunch of ocean fossils of ocean critters basically conglomerated into this mess of stone here. 
Which this stuff is really cool looking. I've always loved this stuff. I always thought it was just the neatest thing in the world. I don't know the name of any of these old, old critters that are in here. I'm not a geologist or a paleontologist or anything like that, but these are one of the things I've always liked about Indiana streams are these old fossils that you can find. You can also find big chunks of granite like this one here. Ugh. Deposited from the glacier thousands of years ago. Like a lot of the gold in Indiana's stream beds. Watch the tadpoles scatter. Here you guys can see this nice rock wall. I always think this thing is just awesome to look at. Most of the rock in Indiana isn't climbable because it just crumbles on you. And I'm not going to keep breaking that away and causing an erosion. And here we have this hole in a rock. I hold in my hand the world's smallest cave. I think I'm going to call it Reeky Tiki Cavern. Let's stick a stick in there and see where it goes. See how far it goes. Reeky Tiki Cavern is this deep. Here you guys can see the flower of jewelweed. This is one of the varieties of jewelweed that we have in the state and in the northeastern United States. This plant is really good for poison ivy rash to some people, though some studies have said that it's not been vindicated by science, so you might want to look that up. However, it does work really well for nettle stings, which I've used it for this personally, and it does work well for that. One of the reasons I don't know about poison ivy is because I'm not allergic to it, oak or sumac, so I wouldn't know. However, you can see this beautiful flower, and some of the other names of this plant are spotted touch-me-not. Why they call it that, I don't know, except for the spots. The touch-me-not part, I have no clue. But, I'm going to get on my way because I'm getting attacked by bugs like crazy. Here you guys can see this box turtle in front of me. This is an eastern box turtle. These things are protected within the state of Indiana, so I'm certainly not going to be harming it in any way or even touching it. But he is really cool and he's checking me out like crazy. You're alright buddy, I'm not going to hurt you a single bit. He is not happy with me getting close. I can understand that. He can feel the vibrations of my voice and my stick behind him. So he's going to move out of the way. Of course he's a turtle, so it takes him a long time to move. And there we go. No disturbance caused to the turtle. Here you guys can see some rose hips starting. That's awesome. Here later in the year there's going to be some awesome rose hips. But oh yeah, the raspberries are coming in here. See all these delectable berries coming in. You can see this delectable raspberry here. This one's not quite ripe, but you can tell it's a raspberry because whenever you pull it, it has this pit inside of this little hole or indention. Mm. Oh yeah. I see some really nice ones back there. Here's how you do this. You just step in there. And if you step in right, you're going to cause very little damage. And that's the thing to keep in mind is to step in properly so you don't damage a lot of plants in the area. But you can see just all these raspberries here, man, just starting to ripen up. This is going to be a great spot for me to come in just a week or two. You see, uh, there you can see the ones in the sun. They get full sun are certainly ripening up much faster. It's growing really thick. This side over here gets a lot of shade, so there's not these berries aren't going to ripen up as fast as the ones over there because they get full sun. But there are a lot of them here, man. Like this delectable guy, right? Like this delectable guy right here. Mm. Oh yeah, nice and sweet. Nice and sweet. All right. I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a little bit of something. I also hope you enjoyed my very first vlog. I hope it went well and I'll try to improve in the future.